and gentlemen, the President-elect of the United States, Donald John Trump. They go, your president. They go, your president. Millions is watching this right now. You look good. Look at Obama. Trump and your first lady, <laughs> the first family. Look at that craziness. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the Joint Congressional Committee for Inaugural Ceremonies, the Honorable Roy Blunt. You all, if you if you have a seat, you can sit down. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Mr. President elect, Mr. Vice President elect, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inauguration of the 45th President of the United States of America. Today, the legislative, the executive, the judicial branches of our constitutional government come together for the 58th inauguration of the President of the United States. Millions of people all over the world will watch and will listen to this event. 36 years ago at his first inauguration, it was also the first inauguration on this side of the Capitol, President Ronald Reagan said that what we do here is both commonplace and miraculous. Commonplace every four years since 1789 when President George Washington took this exact same oath. Miraculous because we've done it every four years since 1789 and the example it sets for democracies everywhere. Washington believed the inauguration of the second president would be more important than the inauguration of the first. Many people had taken control of a government up until then, but few people had ever turned that control willingly over to anyone else. And as important as the transfer of the, the first transfer of power was, many historians believe that the next election was even more important. When in 18 and one, one group of people, arguably for the first time ever in history, willingly, if not enthusiastically, gave control of the government to people they believed had a dramatically different view of what the government would, should, and could do. After that election that actually discovered a flaw in the Constitution itself, which was, which was remedied by the 12th Amendment, Thomas Jefferson, at that inauguration, beyond the chaos of the election that had just passed, said, we are all Republicans, we are all Federalists. After four years of civil war, Lincoln's second inaugural speech tried to find reason for the continued war when he pointed out that both sides prayed to the same God. He'd earlier written about those fervent prayers that one side must be and both sides may be wrong. But in 1865, he looked to the future, and the memorable moment in that speech was 